Today's May 1st. I asked this earlier and they looked at me like I was crazy. Isn't it May 1st like called May Day? Is that not, is that a thing? Right. I have six examples for today's lesson, um, and I will not skip any of them. Each one ought to take a couple of minutes. Before we get started, I wanted to show you something. Let's see. Yeah, I'm showing you this again. Um, the, I named this file Cancel Kitty, but I didn't know what else to call it. But um, the thing about this is once you can get past sort of the, the comedic, comical value of it, um, it serves a very important purpose. You're going to be tempted over the coming days and weeks to cancel things that you're not allowed to cancel. Uh, if you put a problem like what you see up on the board in front of a normal person, instinctively, they would want to just cross out the X squares because we're taught at an early age that if something's in the top of a fraction in the bottom, you can just cancel it out. Um, but the purpose of this is, yes, to make you feel a little bit bad about the fact that if you do this, a kitten will die. Um, and also to remind you that you cannot cancel things that are parts of addition and subtraction problems. And you'll probably hear me say those words at least a couple of dozen times in the coming days. Um, so you, you see that the X squared is separated from the rest of the top by a plus sign. That means he is not a factor. X squared is not a factor. It's an add end. It's a part of an addition problem. And so it is off limits. So just kind of remember this and I'll bring it up every once in a while. I might bring it up just to give you a guilty conscience when you, not if you, but when you go down the road of temptation and cancel things illegally. But thou shalt not cancel things that are parts of addition and subtraction problems. Yeah, man. Still not possible because the X squared on top is part of an addition problem. The quicker today you can just get those words stuck in your head, the better off we're going to be. Like I'm not the one that'll have to take a quiz, so I should say better off you'll be. Um, but the bottom line is if something is a part of an addition or a subtraction problem, it is off limits. The only things that can be canceled are things that are part of multiplication problems. Those are called factors. And when things are factors, then it is open season and you may cancel whatever you wish. So don't worry, this picture is going to pop back up whenever the, the time is right. Uh, but in the meantime, I need to figure out the kitty will not go away. This is... A little disconcerting. There we go. So um, yeah. let me just get right to it. So uh, this is this ought to take a day, maybe two, uh, but we're going to start with this. So again, you'll have some temptations and we just, our job is to try to eradicate those, to just work them out of our system and get them gone. Like as the cancel kitty picture just showed us, those X squareds are not on the table, right? And the 20 and the 16 are also not on the table because everything right now is bound up as part of addition and subtraction. So our only hope is to turn the top and the bottom into multiplication problems. And we do that, how coincidentally, by using factoring, of course. The, the verb to factor is to turn something into a multiplication problem. And we really get to reap the benefits of that here throughout this next couple of weeks in that if I can turn something into a multiplication problem, now when I cancel things out, a kitty won't die. And I like this because I don't, I like kitties, right? And you do too, especially little cute orangey kitties, right? 
I like all kitties. <laughs> Dugan, you like cats? Oh. You what? Oh, that, well, that. So you don't just have some random hatred for cats. You just have a reason to not like them. I get it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top and I'm going to factor it. And if you struggle with factoring, uh, prepare to either you can choose one of two roads. You can decide right here, right now, the next two days, you're going to get good at factoring or you can plan on a very, very miserable last 15 days of school. You have to know how to factor. So the top is going to factor. Um, it's just a standard trinomial. It's like a little algebra one problem. Because of the minus 20, I know there has to be one plus and one minus. Um, and what am I looking for? For sure. So that works for the top. And see, the interesting thing now is that the top is a multiplication problem. It no longer says something plus something minus something. It now says something times something. And that is hugely important. The bottom is a what? You bet it is. And so it factors into x plus 4 times x minus 4. And now, because it is something times something over something times something, you may now go factor hunting. And of course you observe that this X minus four is the exact same factor as this X minus four, rendering them cancelable. You can't selectively cherry pick out part of it, like just the X or the four, but as a package deal, X minus four can cancel an entire other X minus four. Right? So that leaves us with a final answer of x plus 5 over x plus 4. And if you would be inclined to ask a question like, can I cancel those x's, I would just venture like, did you literally just walk in the room? No, because they are parts of addition problems. So that would be the best we could do in a case like this. So this is what we're going to be doing for today and probably tomorrow. Um, and the problems will just get more difficult as the factoring gets more difficult, perhaps. But if you're good at factoring, you've got a huge advantage uh, going into this next uh, couple of weeks. So next one. What do we do? The top one is a sum of cubes whose A value is X and whose B value is two. And so the top one is gonna factor into short set, long set. So what will the top one become? Well done, perfection. And how about the bottom? That's not, we don't really have a name for that. It's, I mean, if you wanted to give it one, it's a quadratic trinomial, but it's not cubes, it's not squares. It's just a ho-hum sort of factory thing. So the bottom is just standard for sure, x plus two and x minus seven. And again, the idea is now I have the top is one thing times another thing, and the bottom is one thing times another thing. And if one of those things in its entirety has a duplicate above or below, then they can cancel. And of course the X plus two in its entirety can cancel this X plus two in its entirety, leaving us with the final answer of X squared minus two X plus four over X minus seven. <laughs> The reason I don't break up the top more is because uh, long set is uh -oh, yeah. that's why. Okay. Still so far so good. <clears throat> All right. Two down, four to go. Our next one, I have uh, this. And as I wrote these examples, I was trying to look at your assignment and think about, as always, there's going to be gaps. There'll be something in there um, where you kind of go, oh, wait, I need help with this. But I was trying to cover like as much of the ground as I possibly could. Now, what kind of, what can I do on the top? Um, 
Yeah, you can pull out a GCF. And when all else fails, don't don't discount that as if it weren't important. Sometimes that's the best we're going to get. And so that's why I wanted to do a problem like this with you is to remind you that GCF is always there. Like it's, I mean, it's always in our in our thoughts on in the front of our mind. So on top, if I pull out a four, I'm left with four times uh, x minus two. What about the bottom? What can I do down there? I can pull out a two, leaving behind x plus three, right? There's not a lot of meat on this particular bone, but we are not quite done. Now that it's a factored expression divided by a factored expression, I see some factors that can go down. Do you see them? The four and the two can all, you can fourth grade reduce those. Like it has nothing to do with high school level math. You notice that this four and this two, since they're factors, they're in play. You can divide them both by two, producing a one and a two. And I wanted you to see this mostly just because it's massively anticlimactic. Sometimes we, I don't want you to go into every problem thinking it's going to be some glorious cancel fest. Uh, the best we could do here was sift out the GCFs and then sift out that GCF of two. And it's like oh, boring. So our final answer is two times X minus two, all divided by X plus three. And if you wanted to, for some reason, multiply the two now back through the x minus two, you could. You certainly don't have to, right? Still good? Okay, on to the back side of the note card. These might be a little tougher. We'll see. We're going to have 8x to the fifth minus 28x to the fourth minus 16 x to the third all over 12 x to the third minus 2 x squared minus 4 x basically these are just factoring problems right in case you haven't figured that out like we're just going to factor and then hope we find some parts and pieces. So uh, imagine that the top were on last Thursday's quiz and I just said factor it. What would you do first? You definitely pulled out that GCF, right? And the, the what we can pull out of the top is four and we can also pull out X cubed. And that leaves us with two X squared minus seven X minus four. Okay, and I'm not going to go down the road of factoring that white thing right now. I'm going to go do to the bottom what I need to, like the, the GCF, like get, get the ball rolling on the bottom. So the bottom is the same idea. What can I get out of the bottom? Yeah, so if I pull out 2 and I pull out X, then I'm left with what? Any questions so far? So for the next couple of minutes, we kind of take the things I've written and read and we put them on the back burner, as they say. And it really helps to be good at factoring. Um, I've, I've alluded to this, I've directly said this at several occasions throughout the year. Being good at factoring is gonna be a benefit that you feel on several occasions. And this is one of those occasions. So when I look at this top, I know it factors, if it's factorable, then I know it factors like this. What are my signs going to be? Yeah, we for sure need one of each because they multiply to make negative four. And then you factor enough and you understand why the four has to go in back and why the one has to go here. Because you're trying to power play that four polar dead across with the two to make that eight, which is really close to seven. And then the signs actually balance out correctly in this case. So the top actually just says um, this. So that's like my top in its most factored form. And I can tell you, um, this really confuses some people, but people that are ready to hear this, this benefits them immensely. Um, 
we math people will often embed clues. It's not even honestly entirely on purpose, but you've got a dilemma now when you go to factor anything that starts with 6x squared. And that dilemma is, um, do I want um, 6x and 1x or do I want 3x and 2x? And sometimes you'll find a clue in the other one, the other half that's already been factored. And this too feels like my clue. And I know that this this one isn't going to be a clue because the four would be useless in this bottom factoring. So I'm thinking I'm going to do a 3x and a 2x. And again, the reason I'm doing that is because I want this thing that I'm circling in yellow to maybe be able to cancel with this thing that I'm circling in yellow. It's like a guide. Um, and then I'm going to, of course, my signs are one of each. So I'm going to put a two here and a one here and a minus here and a plus here. So, so when everything is said and done, uh, your factoring is all done, then this is what the problem looks like and it's ready to go. So good so far? The, the goal now is to understand that the top has four, like four factors. There's four as a factor, bunch of x's is a factor, 2x plus 1 is a factor, x minus 4 is a factor. And the bottom also consists of four factors. 2 is his own, x is his own, and then the parentheses are each their own. So our job now is to go through and find ones that look the same. And I would venture to say that 2x plus 1 is now free to cancel 2x plus 1. Yep. So what's going to wind up happening is, and I usually won't write this out this much, but the top, the 4x to the third looks like this, 4x, x, x, and then the bottom is just 2x. So sometimes it helps to see it written out like this so that this next step doesn't confuse you. Um, but yeah, so if I get rid of the 4x to the third, um, I don't know if I can move this in there successfully or not, but uh, yeah, that kind of works. Sure. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through and I'm going to cancel everything that can be canceled. So like this X can cancel this X, right? Because they're factors. And then this four and this two can both be divided by two, making a two and a pointless one, leaving us with the final answer. What would the final answer then be? Well played. And again, note when I use parentheses and when I choose not to. I don't, I don't need them on the bottom because I don't need anything to be multiplied by that quantity. If there were something else down there, though, then I would need to protect like the structure of the 3x minus 2. But it's the only thing down there, so no one cares. For the record, it would not be wrong if you were to put parentheses. Like, no one cares. But I just generally would not if I don't need them. Good so far? Four down, two to go. All right, next one. We have 7x to the third minus 21x squared minus 126x, all divided by 42x to the third. Oop, nope, that's not x to the third. My bad. That's x to the tooth plus 112x menos 42. What do we do first? Good. On the top, I see that there is a greatest common factor of 7 and also x. And you might wonder, like, well, how am I supposed to know that 126 can be divided by 7? Well, you're really probably not, but that's why we let you use calculators. So it helps. And then I'm going to, of course, put the remnants, and I'm going to have x squared minus 3x minus, um, was that 18? And then I'm going to divide that all by, uh, what are we seeing on the bottom? What's the greatest common factor of all of this? 
Yeah, I mean, you could start with two, and that's okay. There's like, it's, did you not say two? Oh, yeah, 42 doesn't go into 112. Um, so that's not going to work. Seven is a good place to start. What it will do is it'll knock the numbers down to six. Um, if we divide by, what did you say? Seven, that knocks this. What's that, 16? Yeah. And then six. And then what do you notice? They can still be divided by two. Right? Two more. Six, 16, and six can all be divided by two. So if we started by dividing by seven and then realized, oh, crap, I didn't go far enough, then you can kind of put your pieces together that you used. We first you did a seven, then you saw two. Seven times two is our clue. Uh, so the GCF is 14. So we're going to pull. So we're going to pull out a 14. And what's that going to leave behind? Yeah, so 3x squared plus 8x minus 3. Good. And once again, the idea is uh, let's now finish the factorization. So off to the kind of off to the side or above or below, whatever. Uh, the top one should be the simplest thing anyone asks you to do all day. That should be plus three and minus six. And so again, I can take the original expression out and substitute it with that. So the top is now done. Now the bottom is should actually not be hard for us at all because of the three in the front. When the front number is a prime, then we know we don't have a lot of um, guessing to have to do. So the bottom is definitely a three X and a one X. Um, need a plus and a minus. I'm gonna put a plus three over here to force the nine and a minus one over here. So it, I'm sure it's obvious to you by now why we save this unit for after factoring. I mean, because duh, like, wow. Uh, it's really just factoring problems with the added little bonus at the end of getting to cancel things out, like a little reward at the end. So what do we see and what can go bye-bye? Um, X plus three is first off, that's big. I'm gonna take that, boom, boom. I like that, big progress. I agree. So this number seven and this number 14 are div divisible by seven. So the seven becomes a pointless one and the 14 becomes a necessary two. And then of course, you have to write the end. You don't leave it like that and then circle it and say, you, you, you uh, decrypt it for me. No, 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 no. So we're going to clean this up. What's left on top? x times x minus six. It's really easy to lose track of little baby factors uh, when they get kind of sandwiched in the middle of the chaos, but there's still an x sitting out in front. And then what's left on bottom? The x minus one. Feel good? Okay, last one, promise. This will be our, our sixth example of the day. We have 4x squared minus 8x all over 4x to the third minus 12x squared minus 40x. What do we do first? job. I like how quickly you guys are just instinctively going to the GCF. It warms my heart. The top can be pulled by 4x, dropping it to what? Five. Beautiful. And then the bottom, I see another Five. GCF. Yeah, so another 4 and another x, which is nice. So that means all that annoying GCF stuff out front is going to just cleanly go bye-bye, which I like it when that happens. And then that leaves us with what in the parentheses? Beautiful. The top is done, right? The top has all three of his factors exposed. Four, 
is a factor, x is a factor, parentheses are a factor. The bottom though is not done. I have to factor the white parentheses down into what? For sure. And so again, I'm gonna take and have the simplified, or not simplified, excuse me, the factored version um, put in its place. And then it's time for the reward. I always feel like that's my reward at the end is to get them to slaughter some things. And so um, the top, the four and X in their entirety, that's a double factor kill. Could go bye-bye. What else? Nothing. And so again, just the point here is just because something doesn't cancel, it doesn't necessarily mean you did something wrong. I mean, it might, but it doesn't necessarily indicate that. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Like you can't refactor things, say like, maybe I could have done the bottom differently. No, that's not how this works. Like it is what it is. So our final answer would be written as no parentheses needed X minus two over parentheses needed X plus two X minus five. And that's it. I have a worksheet for you today. Um, I would say, are there any questions? But really what's going to happen is your questions are going to come up as you do the problems. So let me know.